Today, we're pinning the Lenovo Legion Go, one of the most capable handheld gaming PCs on the market, against one of the best budget traditional gaming laptops in the market, the HP Victus. I purchased both off of Amazon. I'll leave the listings I bought from below the video. The Legion Go cost me $800 and the HP Victus just under $600. And I gotta say, I think this is a super interesting comparison because I think this handheld format is going to be the feature of mobile gaming. And up until now, laptops have been the go-to solution for this. A couple of years ago, having enough power with the proper cooling, battery life in this form factor to do real heavy gaming simply wasn't possible. So today we're gonna take a deep dive and see exactly where these stand compared to outgoing gaming laptops. Diving straight into benchmarks, I booted up 3D Mark on both, which is a specialized gaming specific test. Okay, we just got the score back on both. On the laptop, the RTX 2050, we got an overall score of 4,238, and on the Lenovo Legion Go, 3,123. So that means the HP Victus on Battlefield 5 1080p Ultra is gonna pull about 90 frames per second, and the Go with the same setting, same game, 65 frames per second. We can also test a more heavy game such as Red Dead Redemption 2. And on the laptop, this is gonna pull about 50 FPS. And with the Go, we're gonna achieve about 40 frames per second. And finally, Fortnite is a light game. The laptop's gonna pull an estimated 195 and the Go is gonna give you an estimated 185. And this is largely in step with what I've seen personally while gaming on both these devices. The laptop is just a little bit smoother, a bit more capable. All right, next moving on to a CPU benchmark because clearly this was gonna win with the graphical benchmark. It has a six core CPU and a dedicated separate RTX 2050 graphics card. But the CPU should be much more interesting. They're both AMD. We have the Ryzen 5 7535HS over here and the Ryzen Z1 Extreme on the go. This is six core, this is eight core. Yep, so as expected, Winner over here with a multi-core up top of 12,413, single of 1724. And over here, still a very respectable multi of 9,814 and single of 1425. The real world performance was surprising. Uh, be warned, I'm currently going through a zombie phase. So you're gonna see a lot of zombie footage here. This is Black Ops 3 and for an FPS game, it is relatively demanding especially when compared to Overwatch, CSGO. There's lots of lighting effects, shadows, but obviously it's still lighter than Fallout 4 and games like that. So I set the laptop to high 1080p settings and I tried to do the same with the Legion Go. However, due to the scaling and the aspect ratio, 1080p just isn't an option. So I went just under that at 960p high settings. The game still looked uh, just as, if not more crispy, because you gotta remember the display is smaller. So the pixel density was actually higher on the go, and, but at high 1080p settings, the laptop pulled 100-ish frames per second, and at the 960p high settings, the Legion Go pulled about 80 frames per second. This is a good time to mention that both displays here are running at a fast 144 hertz, which is a great selling point for both these devices. And the gameplay itself, 80 frames and 100 frames, it was very comparable. I can't really say one was dramatically better than the other. And neither system had any thermal issues. The stability was great. And by far the main difference here was just the form factor. The Go is half the size and it gives you the option to use console controls, which depending on the game and the setting can be quite the advantage. Now, Overwatch is easily my favorite game of all time. And it runs beautifully on the Lenovo Legion Go. I currently have it set to 1280 by 800, so half of the native resolution. And you can see here that we're maxing out at 144 frames per second. So fully utilizing this fast refresh rate. And if we go ahead and try and up the settings here, the next leap up is slightly above 1080p due to the aspect ratio. It's 1920 by 1200. So let's go ahead and select this, apply the settings, and we're gonna stay on high graphical settings. Immediately, the game does look a lot sharper. I would certainly prefer to play this way, especially on this beautiful display. And you can see here we're pulling as I move around here, 
about 90 frames per second. And on the HP Victus, this is 1080p, high settings, and we're maxing out at the 144 frames per second. The game looks fantastic, although usually on this system, I play in 1080p ultra settings. So if I go ahead and change this to ultra, now we're pulling about 120-ish frames per second. It does dip, I just saw 108 frames. But hopefully that gives you a better idea of the, the limits of this machine. I want to go ahead and tell you guys that I'm not going to be keeping both these machines for much longer. So if you want to see any other specific comparisons, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know between these two devices which one I should keep. After making this video, I think I convinced myself to keep the Legion Go. It just feels like the future. It's half the size, it's more fun to use, and it's almost as powerful. I do wish these devices were powered by an ARM chip, however. Snapdragon just announced a super cool ARM chip that tops the M2 from Apple, and I think it's pretty clear that this is the future of computing. They require less power, they run cooler, faster boot times, all of the other benefits we're used to enjoying on our phones and tablets, and now they're just as fast as many quote-unquote regular desktop chips. I mean, for instance, the M2 chip tops the Ryzen Z1 Extreme we have here in Geekbench. So I can't wait for devices like this to be running using ARM chips. That's gonna be a completely game-changing moment. But even now in early 2024, I think they still make a compelling case over traditional laptops. Again, I'll leave the Amazon link to both these products below the video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you guys in the next one.